What's up guys, it's Mike here, and this is gonna be my two week review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So this phone was released on Friday, September 20th, and I've had a good two weeks to play around with it and have my hands on it and get to know the phone in and out. So I was upgrading from an iPhone 6S Plus, and I, I gotta say, like, this phone is dramatically different than how tech was and phones were, uh, you know, four years ago. So basically this video is just gonna be a collection of my thoughts of getting used to the phone, things I've had to adjust to from the iPhone 6S Plus, things I like about the phone, and things I don't really like about the phone. So the first thing I want to talk about is Face ID. Now Apple was saying that the Face ID on the, uh, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is the fastest Face ID they've ever had. I don't really have any comparisons to make from that based on my personal experience, um, so I, you know, I can't say anything about that, but I will say that it is fast. The initial setup that I did for Face ID didn't really work all that well. It's probably because, if you guys didn't see the video, I unboxed this, I unboxed this phone on video and set up Face ID for the first time and I think it didn't work very well because I was I was trying to figure out and make sure like the camera was seeing it at the same time and like my secondary camera over here was seeing it so I think I had a lot more attention a lot more of my attention on you know the filming process rather than you know actually trying to make sure it worked properly but after after the secondary setup that I did at Face ID it has worked uh, very well since then. I have experienced some minor hiccups every now and then you know, I'll, I'll try and unlock the phone, pick it up, try and unlock it. It doesn't unlock for whatever reason. I'll have to type in the passcode. But, I mean, that, that's happened a handful of times in the past two weeks. It really doesn't happen all that often. But it is very fast. And I have to say, I was very surprised about some things about Face ID. Like, this works in, in almost, it, it works in pitch black. I've used it in my bedroom. And, you know, my wife and I have some blackout shades on the window. And, like, when we sleep at night, it is pitch black in that room. Like, you cannot see a thing. And Face ID works in our bedroom in those circumstances, like pitch black. I think that's because the infrared on the, uh, you know, the front of the camera here picks up like the, the dimensions of your face and whatever. I think it's pretty cool. It works with sunglasses on. I have like some uh, some computer glasses I use to, to help with, uh, you know, the blue light coming from the computer screen. It works with those on. I don't wear hats, so I haven't really tried, I haven't had any hats to try this with, but overall I'm very impressed with Face ID. Something else I want to say about the cameras is they're they're very good quality. Like the the three, I know there's been a lot of memes about uh, the you know the three three lenses on the back, you know, with like stove tops or whatever. I know there's some memes floating around about that. Aesthetics aside, the cameras are very good quality. I like the you know the ability to zoom in and out or, or pick which camera you're using when you're filming or or shooting photos. Big quality of life improvement, at least from the 6s Plus that I was using before. So next, let's talk about the home button or the lack of a home button. And again, if you're if you're coming from an iPhone 10 or 10R or, or 10S, this is not something that's gonna be new to you. But since I'm coming from a 6S Plus, this is very new to me and it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to. It didn't take nearly as long as I thought. My fear was, you know, I was gonna be fumbling around with my fingers and my thumb for, for weeks trying to get used to operating a phone without a home button. And it really didn't, it, it took maybe a couple days. I think after a couple days of, of getting used to the gestures on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, I was, uh, was pretty good. So I think on the iPhone 6S Plus, what you had to do to, to take a screenshot is press the uh, the side button right here and the home button at the same time you have a screenshot. For the iPhone 11 Pro Max, what you have to do is press the, the side button and the volume up button, and that will take a screenshot for you. So that was that's one difference. Also navigating between apps that you have open takes a, some new gestures. So basically like you just swipe up from the bottom and swipe between apps or whatever. You can also swipe up and hold to get a list of apps you have open. You can just swipe up to close the apps you want or um, you know, you can browse the open apps that way. Or you can just swipe across the bottom of the screen to change apps without uh, you know, seeing everything that you have open. So if you have an iPhone 10, that last point is not really gonna be applicable to you, but if you're upgrading from an iPhone that still has the home button present on it, uh, you know, that's, what you, that's what you can expect. So my particular iPhone 11 Pro Max is in the midnight green color. And I did a, a whole separate four and a half minute review on the green color. If you're more interested in that, you should watch it. I'll, I'll link it up here. You know, the matte green is very nice. I think the matted, the matted colors just in general overall across the board look very nice. The build quality of this phone is, I would say, top notch. I mean, I, Apple always does a pretty good job of build quality in my opinion. I've watched a few other videos on YouTube about like, you know, scratch tests and drop tests and things like that for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I do have a screen protector on this and a case on this, but I'm not really worried after seeing those videos about, you know, damaging this phone. I think Apple's done a pretty good job of, you know, making this phone very, very damage resistant for the most part. And actually, one of the, one of the first things I noticed when I purchased the phone was how heavy it, heavy it is. I mean, it's not, it's, it's not like it's going to hurt your, your, you know, your arm's going to get tired holding it or anything, but it is noticeably heavier than 
the iPhone 6s Plus I was using and uh, my wife's phone. My wife actually just bought a, an iPhone 10R. This is noticeably heavier than that. And I think a lot of that has to do with the extra battery inside, which leads me to the next point of battery life. So I have done a lot of battery testing on this phone and I can't say that the battery has lasted me two entire days without charging, without even plugging it in at all of, uh, of moderate use. Light to moderate to maybe a little bit heavy use. So I don't think I charged the phone for two days after I purchased it and I was using it extensively for those first two days and I plugged it in overnight. The next morning, I think I used it for another two days straight and I think I had like 20% battery life left after that that second two day time period. So I probably could have just waited again overnight, maybe use it a little bit more the second day, but I think um, I think at least in my case, two days is about what I'm gonna get. And of course, like, you know, your scenario might be maybe different, your mileage may vary. The speakers are also very good for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. They're much louder than any other phones that my wife and I have used. A lot louder than the 6S Plus. Uh, my wife had the 6S Plus as well. I don't have any like Android phones to compare it to or, or other iPhones. My wife did just pick up a 10R, so I may make a comparison video just between the, the 11 Pro Max and the 10R. But the speaker volume is noticeably louder than the iPhone 6S Plus, which is, you know, which is a good thing. Hey, sweetie. Hey. I'm in the middle of filming, filming a video. Is everything all right? So interestingly enough, talking about the speaker, my wife just called. So I'm going to put my wife on speaker right now, and I'm going to turn the volume up to the max level it can go, and I'll have her just talk to the camera right here. Okay, go ahead, sweetie. Alright, speaker test. One, two, three, speaker test. <laughs> One of the negatives, in my opinion, about this phone, and it really has nothing to do with the phone itself, it really has, I guess, has more to do with Apple's marketing strategy, is that you have a choice of 64 gigs and then 256 gigs of storage. There's no 128, and 128 seems to be like the perfect number for me. I picked up the 64 because I didn't want to spend the extra money for 256. I wish Apple had made a 128 gigabyte version of this phone for storage. I mean, I kind of get what they're doing, not having a 128 gig version. The iPhone 6S Plus that I had was 128 gig. I wish Apple did it for this one. Something else that I'm not particularly fond of with the iPhone 11 Pro Max is that some apps don't utilize all of the screen real estate on the phone, which is it probably has more to do with developers not pushing out updates fast enough for the new screen size, uh, more than anything else, more than the actual phone at least. But uh, it is kind of annoying. So Instagram stories, for example, you know, will crop in the story to fit on on the screen. In reality, like when you're putting a story up there, you, it looks like you have more screen real estate than you actually do when it's pushed, uh, you know, to Instagram stories live for other people to watch. If that makes sense. I also have another uh, app that I use called Elements. It's like a periodic table app because I'm a nerd. The app itself is cropped in, which is not like a big deal, but I don't know. Some of you guys out there here researching this phone, you know, that may be annoying. So it's something to keep in mind. So next, let's talk about the notch. Now, personally, the notch doesn't bother me at all. I barely even notice it. If you, if you watched my unboxing video of this phone, I think I said like 10 minutes into the unboxing process was, was the first time I even noticed it. So like taking the phone out of the case, turning it on for the first time, all that stuff. I didn't even notice it was there. I don't even know how I first noticed it was there, but any, anyways, it doesn't bother me. It bothers some people. This is much more of an issue, I think, when the iPhone 10 came out. The notch is like, you know, this huge point of controversy in the tech arena. But in my opinion, it doesn't really detract from the user experience. On previous versions of the iPhone, like the 6S Plus, I was migrating from, from probably the iPhone 7 and iPhone 8 as well. You know, the, the clock used to be in the middle of, of the top part of the screen. Now it's on the left, and you have, uh, you have like your battery, your Wi-Fi, and your signal on the right. You, you used to be able to see your battery percentage. Now you just have to swipe down from the right hand side of the screen to see that with the control center. That's not really a big deal in my opinion. Some apps for whatever reason still haven't adapted to it. So for example, the YouTube creators app will cut off the top part of a thumbnail where the notch goes. I'm not really sure why. Something else I will say if you're planning on upgrading to the iPhone 11 from, from another generation is that the initial process of migrating data over to this phone, at least in my case, was kind of a pain in the butt. I didn't realize it, or I, I, I chose not to migrate my data from my iPhone 6S Plus at the Apple Store because I wanted to, you know, have the first unboxing done for you guys. In doing that, I kind of traded off the, you know, the process of making sure everything was, was good to go right after purchasing the phone. I had to do all that myself. The biggest drawback is that once you turn this phone on for the first time and you've gone through all the, the setup process, if you don't migrate your data from your other phone during that time period and you don't have an iCloud backup, you don't pay for iCloud backups or iCloud storage, something like that, you will have to reset your iPhone 11 in order to go through the setup process again to migrate your data from your other phone. I didn't know this, so I had to, I ended up resetting this phone like two or three times just trying to figure out how all that worked. Because I was trying, I was trying to migrate my data after this phone had been set up, 
wasn't possible. So something else to keep in mind if you are planning on upgrading to the, to the iPhone 11 and don't plan on setting everything up at the Apple Store. So this next point that I want to talk about is probably the only thing that I really just don't like about the phone itself that doesn't have something to do with software or developers not pushing updates fast enough. And that is that when I lift the phone up sometimes or just move it around on occasion, it will come on when I don't want it to. Sometimes it will even unlock if I'm looking in the general direction. And sometimes if I have my, my fingers on the screen or whatever, the flashlight will, will come on. I guess for whatever reason, I tend to, to put my thumb in the bottom corner where, where the flashlight app is down here. And, uh, and it just makes the flashlight come on. It's annoying. I don't think I can do anything about it. I, I kind of get why Apple has it set up that way to, for the screen to come on due to an accelerometer built in the phone. Since there is no uh, home button on here, still kind of frustrating in my opinion though. This next one is uh, specific for AT&T users. For, for whatever reason, AT&T has decided to put a 5G connection icon. I guess technically it's not 5G. It's 5GE. 5GE connection icon in the top right hand corner of the screen when you're in a 5GE area. What this means I don't think this means anything else than other like LTE. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, holy cow, I'm on a 5G connection. But uh, I, you know, I did a speed test. Nope, it's a normal connection. I'm not sure if other carriers are doing this as well, but a uh, little misleading on AT&T's part to put 5G up there, even though it's 5GE still has 5G in the title and it makes you think you're on a 5G connection when you're not. The last point I wanna make about the iPhone 11 Pro Max has to do with the shutdown mini. Now, before you could just, you could just press the side button for a few seconds and you'd have the option to, you know, to shut down the phone. For this, for the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's not like that. Initially, I thought you had to go into the options and turn it down, you know, turn the phone off manually if you wanted to shut down the phone for whatever reason. On accident, I forget what I was doing, but on accident, I figured out you could just press the side button and either one of the volume buttons, hold, you know, hold down the side button and either one of the volume buttons for a few seconds, and then you'd have the option to, I'll do it right here. Then you have the option to shut it down, make an emergency call, whatever. And with that being said, guys, that is my two-week review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. I think th this phone is definitely a keeper. This phone, I, I love it. There are a few things that I don't like about it, but overall, there's a lot more to like and love about the iPhone 11 Pro Max than there is to dislike. And at least in my case, most of the things that I dislike don't really have to do with the phone itself. It has more to do with software or, or other things. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, you know what to do. Give it a huge thumbs up. Subscribe for more. I'll see you all next time.